Hello everybody, I am the Linkzilla, and, well, it has been a long while since I have made any kind of video, so I was hoping to basically, like, do a, um, quick little video kind of explaining where I've been and what's been going on, because <laughs> I honestly thought that it would uh, be a bit better than this, but it has literally been over a year since I've submitted any kind of video. It had been more than a year since I submitted any kind of gaming video, but even then, it's been a year since I submitted a video on Godzilla vs. Kong, that uh, monstrous moment thing that I did, and there are a whole lot of reasons for that, and I feel really guilty about it. So, effectively, I just wanted to give you guys a bit of an explanation as for why it was like that. Uh, effectively speaking, I just want you guys to know the channel is not dead. I fully intend to basically get back into uh, making more videos, want to get back into the swing of things, because now my life is finally getting back into a kind of settled position where I can realistically see myself putting in a lot more effort to make more videos, and I actually am in a better position to where I can get better editing software. So that's all really good news right now, but I just felt like you guys were deserved an explanation as to what happened to me. So. January of last year, I started noticing that I was getting upwards of like 99 subscribers and I was close to hitting 100, so basically I am thinking about what I'm going to do for my 100 subscriber special, and here I am a year later <laughs> with 110. Around the time that I basically like finished playing Sonic Heroes last year, I sort of took a break from like uh, playing games because I honestly didn't know what my next project was going to be. I, ba I basically run out of games that I had on my backlog, and I was wondering how I was going to get into the swing of things. One thing that I know that I've wanted to do for a long time was basically do a second playthrough of Doom Eternal, because I have a feeling that my first playthrough of Doom Eternal was not only incredibly unfair towards the game itself, but also the fact that the playthrough I have discovered is incomplete because the files for at least two of the episodes have become corrupted, so they no longer exist. They're still on YouTube, but they're unable to be viewed by anyone. And I've even tried to download them, and they just they just don't work. So I want to basically have a kind of fresh start with the game, so that when I finally do my review on the game, I can be as unbiased as possible. I still intend to do a completely subjective portion of that review, where I list off whatever grievances I have with the games, but that's going to be subjective. The problems that I have with the games that are objective are going to go in the review, and I'm doing it before playing the uh, the Ancient Gods DLC. Yeah, it's, they've been out for like over a year now, and I still haven't played them, so anyways, I'm wasting time here rambling. What exactly happened? As you all are aware, in July of 2020, so now that I was done with college, I had to move out of basically the college dorms because, well, let's face it, they're for students, and unless I basically got a better job, I wouldn't be able to get it anyway. So, I moved out of there, and I moved into a house with uh, some other roommates that basically had, like, a great price, but... Effectively speaking, it was very clear that moving into that place... It, that was basically going to be a temporary thing, and I basically couldn't stay there forever. Effectively speaking, I think that basically, like, I don't know what my old roommates are planning, whether or not they wanted to have a different roommate come in and uh, basically, like, stay with them, and I was basically taking up the only spare room they had, or if they basically want to sell that house and get rid of it. Either way, it's none of my business anymore, because I don't live there anymore, so... The point is, I had to find... A place to live on my own and I couldn't do that while I still had my old job. So around February I basically realized that the clock was ticking and I basically had until summer to get going. So I started being more effort into working hard as it were. I basically approached my boss at work and basically told him that uh, things need to basically change for me. I either need a raise or I need a promotion because otherwise I can't keep this job. I have to go and get a another job that's going to actually pay me better. So, effectively speaking, 
he was surprised that I was actually making as little as I did, and he actually did give me the raise of about 40 cents. Yeah, that's not a raise. That's what you find when someone is dropped on the floor. That's, that's your raise right there. An extra 40 cents an hour. But I'm not here to bash that job. I'm actually here to basically kind of say that that job gave me what I needed because, effectively speaking, it pretty much got me to buckle down and start working harder at that job. And eventually, they, well, not eventually, rather quickly, three weeks later, they promoted me. They made me into a store manager. It was better than where I was, so, and best of all, now that I was a manager, they started giving me better, they started giving me more hours and more shifts, so, that basically made my roommates happy, and it also made me a bit happy because they started having me do night shifts, so, and I gotta say, night shifts were probably the funnest shifts that I've done at that job because it, like, especially during the spring and the summer, the sun goes down, the area starts cooling off, and most of all, people gradually, eventually slow down and they stop coming. <laughs> Except for the people that basically got the midnight munchies literally, and show up literally five minutes before we're about to close the damn store. So, But anyways, working those shifts were really good, especially considering that I basically got done by 1am, I got home by like 1.30, I got to stay up basically as late as I felt I could get away with, I got to sleep in, and then basically I didn't have to go to work until 3 or 5pm the next day. It was great. It didn't matter if I woke up at noon because I didn't have to be at work for several more hours. Even though I was a manager and was making more money and getting more hours, that, it wasn't doing enough in the eyes of basically what I needed to do, what I was setting my goals towards, because I kept shopping around for apartments in my area, and basically speaking, like, with where I currently am, I could either only afford a one-bedroom apartment or a studio apartment, and a studio apartment is basically like my preferred uh, choice, because it's basically, in real, real, it's really inexpensive, and it fits my needs. So, unfortunately, this was during, this was basically still at, during the pandemic, and the shutdown was still basically, like, fully strong in my area. So, effectively speaking, they weren't necessarily, like, they didn't have that many vacancies, because not a lot of people were moving out, and worst of all is that of the places that did have uh, a room available, they basically wouldn't even consider my application because effectively I wasn't making enough money for them. I was making enough money to make the rent each month, but they require basically you make three times the rent. Uh, basically, so, and, well, that meant that even with my promotion at work, I had to get a better job. I basically knew that my time at that job was over, and I had to basically start branching out and getting new avenues. There was this old, there was this startup company that my sister, she got her start at, and she basically pretty much said that they were pretty much hiring anybody that they could fresh out of college. All you needed is a degree, and they will basically, like, give you a job and work with you. And I decided to apply for them, and I was surprised to hear back from them. They set me up for an interview, and they wanted to interview me on April the 1st, so... Uh, and don't get me wrong, it wasn't an April Fool's joke. I got dressed up for the interview. It was uh, completely done uh, over the computer, and they they seemed to be very impressed with me, and they said that they wanted to sign me on. So they sent over a contract, and it's like, this seemed like a good job. Except there were a few caveats. You see, the job itself, their headquarters was set up in, well, it's out of state, and the position that they were hiring from was a remote position because everybody was still working at from home due to the pandemic. But the problem is, is that they were planning to roll back the work from home order and start bringing everyone back into the office. And I'm left thinking, why? Why would you basically do that? Not only is the pandemic still going on, but that would mean that all the people that you're hiring who are currently living outside of state 
would have to then relocate to your state in order to basically work there. And I thought that the reason that you even put up the this these criteria was to hire out-of-state clients who wouldn't have to move or relocate to work with you guys. So they basically told me under no uncertain terms that it was likely at some point during the summer I would have to relocate and basically move to that state in order to have that job. I asked them if they were giving me any kind of moving budget. They said no. So what they basically told me is that they would basically like draw up my contract and they would have something for me in about a month. And then once I officially started, I would have about one month to basically find an apartment in order to basically move out to the state that they were basically in. I didn't want to have to cross state lines in order to basically like do this job. And what's worse is they, they wouldn't mail me, they wouldn't ship me my work from home remote equipment which I think is just obnoxious because they required me to drive across the state line to pick up that equipment and then drive back. Each trip was four hours, and it was a total of eight hours. And But I'm getting ahead of myself. The point is, is that I basically got this job back in April, and they told me that it would take about a month to draw up my contract. So I was expecting to start work in May. I didn't start work in May, I, and that's one of the reasons why I feel like with this new job I was deceived, because effectively speaking, what they had done was that they basically wanted to delay starting me until sometime in June, because they instead wanted to get as many people as they could to start in June, and I felt a bit pissed off at that because I needed a new job and I needed it now, especially because... If I had the job earlier on, it would have given me more ample opportunity to find an apartment in the area they wanted me to move in, especially because around that time, they had some apartments that would have been perfect for me that were available, that literally would have been so close by that I would be able to walk to work. So I literally kept saying, like, hey, do I have the job? Uh, can you guys, like, send me my contract already? I would really like to get started because I want to confirm that I have the job so I can start the process of moving because I can't move unless I can prove I have this new job. So they didn't start me until June, and that created a big problem because all the apartments that were available in the area, they immediately got scooped up for the summer. So... And the worst part about it is, is that all the places that I looked at wouldn't have anything available until August. So I kept asking, can we push back, like, the mandate until for me to basically start commuting to the office until August? Because I can't find an apartment until at least August. But nope, I did that job for one month and, well... <laughs> They basically said, yeah, it's uh, going to be start being time for you to start coming into the office again. And it's like, well, what am I supposed to do? I can't just, like, I can't just drive across state lines and move into a hotel. I can't, because I, I need an actual place to stay. Because if I move into a hotel, I'm going to run out of money. <laughs> so effectively speaking, I felt pissed off. I felt like this job had misled me. And I felt a little bit betrayed by everything that this job had basically done. All the lies that this job had basically told me. So, especially considering that for this job, it really wasn't, the pay really wasn't all that worth it. Because it was only, mar it was only a slightly a bit more than what I was would have been making if I had stayed as a manager at the restaurant. So... It definitely was not worth it in my mind. I definitely liked having one month where I basically got to work entirely from home. We realized that it just wasn't going to work out. So so I decided to turn in my resignation for that job and started looking for a new job that was in the area. And the best part about it is I was able to find one relatively easily. I hooked up with a third-party hiring company that basically is, um, I probably shouldn't name them because, like, I'm, I'm not sponsoring them or anything. The point is, is that they do, like, kind of direct hire things where they put you in jobs where basically you can easily start, you can start immediately and you can start get to, getting to work and all that good stuff. And they basically managed to find me jobs that were 
paying much better. I mean, unfortunately, most of their jobs that were in my skill set were, well, let's say that they just dried up very quickly. So I ended up having to do a whole lot of odd jobs that I ultimately didn't end up sticking with. Yeah, I changed jobs basically a total of five times in the last year or so, guys. And that's basically what soaked up all my free time and why whenever I got home from work, I was just so mentally exhausted that I just didn't want to do... I just couldn't put the effort into making YouTube videos, especially with the whole effort slash reward kind of thing, not feeling worth it. Yeah, you guys just got to bear with me on that. So the point that I'm getting at here is that the first job I tried was a factory job. I basically realized that that wasn't going to work out, so ended up leaving that job pretty quickly. The next job I got in a kind of a sh in a kind of a thrift store. It was a warehouse um, that they basically like have all the miscellaneous items shipped to. What you had to do is you had to go through it. You had to scan the items and like make sure. I basically worked in their video game slash movie, their, their entertainment department. So what you do is you open up these random boxes, you find what's inside, you scan it into the computer, and then you basically pack it up into like uh, on, the, to, on the boxes to be put on the shelves. And I gotta admit, they, I, I actually saw some pretty cool stuff like old classic video games and movies that I loved. It was an exciting job. Effectively speaking, I couldn't keep that job for all that long because, well, it not only was it a temporary thing, but they just basically wanted to go with different people. It wasn't long after that before I found a job with a chemical company. I worked in their shipping warehouse where basically I would pretty much like go around the warehouse and fill out people's orders. I would basically like take a list of everything that they order, I would take it off the shelves and take it up to the front where it will be processed, packaged, and shipped out to them. And I did that job for about a month. And I gotta admit, <laughs> that was a job that was physically demanding and very exhausting because it started like at 6 a.m. I loved the fact that I got off at 2 p.m. and got to go home early, far before my roommates got off work and basically had the house to myself for a while. But the thing about it is, is that like, uh, even though that job was arguably one of the worst jobs I ever had, it was at the same time one of the best jobs I ever had because free coffee in the morning, they sometimes would provide you with breakfast and whatnot. You basically got to take a lunch break, which they were some of the friendliest people that I have ever worked with. And, well, this video has already gone on for 20 minutes. I'm only halfway done with the story. So, working at that warehouse basically made me say that, made me think that, like, I have to do better than this. I have to be worth more than this. I have to do a job where I don't have to do physical labor anymore because this job is literally going to kill me if I keep this up. Like, don't get me wrong, there's nothing wrong with doing a job where you're physically fit, but I, it's not my cup of tea, it's not my forte. I like a job where I can use my mind, where I can think a whole lot more. Effectively speaking, well, the point is, is that I had a better paying job because now I basically was, from where I was working at the restaurant, I had basically like gone, increased my income so much that I basically was in a much better position to start looking for a new place of my own. Unfortunately, however, because I still wasn't satisfied with working at this warehouse, I decided that I wanted to keep searching for new jobs, jobs that would not only allow me to work from a desk, but would also allow me to work from home. And, well, needless to say, this is where my troubles truly began, because I was hit with a setback that really set me back a whole lot. Here's what happened. It was the beginning of August, literally just a few days, I think, after my birthday. Driving around in the summer heat, going from one interview to the next, trying to find someone who's going to give you the time of day, hoping to see the light at the end of the tunnel, only to basically be rejected every single time. Keep basically, like, looking over my resume, they keep interviewing me, and they ask me all the standard questions, and unfortunately, well... <clears throat> 
they never they never call me back, which is a huge problem because it's like, well, and sometimes they do call me back. Sometimes they call me back just to say, yeah, sorry, we're going with someone someone else. I mean, I basically call I basically interviewed with a uh, medical uh, collections company. I interviewed with a bank. I interviewed with so many different companies. That it's just like, please, one of you, give me a shot. The problem is, is that the hiring freeze is still going on because of everything with the pandemic. So the hiring freeze, the housing freeze, all this was basically just a bad time to try and find a new place to live. Here's where everything really went down. I get a few calls and a few emails on one day basically stating that there are two companies that want to interview me. And I'm thinking they want to interview me on the same day at different times of the day. So I'm going to call into work. I'm going to take the day off and I'm going to go to both of these interviews. Now, here's one of the big problems that I have is that with one of these jobs, it was actually very local. It was just in the next city. So I could easily see myself moving back there and basically taking up an apartment and easily being able to get to and from work. The second job was basically in the heart of Atlanta. And, well... I basically don't like going to Atlanta even at the best of times, especially not with the shitty-ass car that I was driving at the time, because no matter what I basically did with that car, the air conditioning unit just really wasn't uh, enough to actually get me any kind of comfort from the, summer, some, from the summer heat. So, it was in the middle of the afternoon, I had f had that first interview, and I was sitting around waiting for the appropriate time to basically leave to go to my next one, planning to leave an hour and a half early in order to adjust for Atlanta traffic, and I was sitting there thinking, you know, maybe this isn't a good idea. Maybe I should just call them up and say, e, I've reconsidered because the job, the commute for the job just does not seem worth it to me. I'm sorry, thank you for the opportunity. I decided to not do that, considering that I wanted to basically make it seem that I t worth it, that I took the job off, that I took the day off work for a reason. This is why I basically now have a new philosophy to trust my first instinct on these things. So, I drive to this new job. I actually am making great time, but during the last few miles before I get there, I hit a patch of traffic that is caused by an accident that locks up the street that I need to get through for nearly an hour. I left there an hour and a half early, and by the time I'm basically like sitting, making any movement through this line of traffic, I realize that I only have half an hour to get there left, and this thing isn't moving. So I call them up and saying, Hi, I've got this interview like at, uh, at uh, 3 o'clock. I was wondering if we could push it back to 3.30. I am on my way, but I'm sitting in a very tight patch of traffic, and I don't know how, long, how much longer it's going to be. So please let them know that I'm coming. Just let them wait for me. I manage to get there. I get to a nice-looking building. I interview, and it's very clear that this job just really wasn't going to work out for me. I left that job in a bit of a huff, and I basically, all I can think about is just getting back home before my roommates get home so I can enjoy the last few hours of my day. And unfortunately, I hit a patch of traffic that really kind of frustrated me, and, well, I just don't know how else to say this, I got into a car accident. Yeah. The right lane that I that the right lane of traffic I noticed had suddenly started moving, and I was basically stuck behind this really slow moving line of traffic. So I decided to merge into the right lane. However, up in front of me were two vans, basically one following the other. The van at the very front suddenly stopped short for some reason, causing the van behind him to stop short. And I was still in the middle of merging into the lane when suddenly the van stopped short on me. And I don't have any room or any space to stop. I slam on the brakes with all my might, but it's too late. I end up rear-ending the van. Now, I didn't do all that much damage to the van. I literally, The only damage that I did was that I left one hairline crack in his plastic bumper. Meanwhile, his van basically destroyed my car. It was a 2003 Toyota Echo, and it was the first car I ever had. 
and I had basically just, I had finished paying it off the year before, so the car was 100% mine. It had basically taken a few bumps and scrapes over the years, but I do remember a co-worker mentioning that he wanted to buy it from me for at least $1,500. I wish that I had taken the opportunity to take him up on that offer, but I was about to leave that job and I needed a car, and I couldn't... I basically didn't want to go through the hassle of trying to get a new one. So, fat little good that ended up doing me in the long run. The car literally looks like the Hulk basically decided to basically punch it in the face. The ri- the entire the entire front is crumpled up. The hood is b- dented and busted up. The radiator is leaking, and worst of all, the accelerator is now broken to the point where. Basically, it's pressed all the way down, and the car barely moves. Effectively speaking, well, let's face it, the car, it's just not going anywhere. So, we sit there, we wait for the police to arrive, and because it was determined that, effectively, I was still merging into the lane when the when I rear when I rear-ended the guy, and the guy had to suddenly stop to avoid hitting the guy who stopped short on him... It was basically deemed that the accident was no one's fault, so thankfully that hasn't really done anything to affect my driving record or my insurance rates. But the problem is is that I'm out of a car, and insurance wasn't going to pay for it, because effectively I have insurance that covers if I get hit, but not if I hit anyone else, even if the accident isn't my fault. So, really kind of feel like I get screwed on that one, but the point is, is that I don't have a car, they bring a wrecker out, they tow my car away, and the police officer offers to give me a ride to get me off the active highway to take me to a neutral, safe location where I can get an Uber who will take me home. So I have him take me to a quick trip gas station, and meanwhile, I'm just, I'm a complete wreck. I can't believe what has just happened, because... All this time throughout the summer, I was making headway. Yeah, there were stumbles along the way, but I was finally moving forward with my life, and it looked like I was on a good path when suddenly this comes along and sets me back. I call up my boss and tell him, like, look, I was just in a car accident. I'm a bit banged up. I'm okay, but I don't have a car, so I'm going to have to... So I'm, I'm probably not going to come into work. I'm probably not going to be able to make it into work tomorrow. I'm going to see what I can do about getting transportation. So I basically call up my sister and my family and let them know that I got into a car accident. And they basically start coming up with it, coming up with means of trying to figure out how do I get past this. So the next day, I basically get a ride from my sister out to the wrecker yard. I see how badly the car has been messed up. I basically drive it to a shop that will basically take the car off my hands if I sign it over to them, and they'll basically have it hauled away for scrap for me. So, there goes my first car, my the Toyota Echo that served me well. I just kind of wish that I could have ended that car on better terms, considering that I wish that basically I had managed to pretty much sell that car without having to destroy it, but it's it's something that basically I was haunted by for pretty much like the next several weeks of sleepless nights. So now I'm basically trying to work with the bank, I'm trying to work with car dealerships, I'm trying to find anyone who's selling a used car at a decent price. I finally get in good with Carvana. They pre-approved me for a car loan. The problem is, is that the car that I wanted, that they said was available, they no longer, they couldn't give me that car for some other reason. And basically, I think another car that I tried to get, they incorrectly listed, saying it was a stick shift instead of a gear shift because I haven't learned how to drive stick. A, a, a manual, not an automatic. That's what I'm basically saying. So the point is, is that it took me a while to get a car, and they kept delaying, delaying, and delaying, but I finally managed to get a new car, a nice 2012 Ford Focus. Only had about 70,000 miles on it, which is pretty good. And I basically have a pretty good pretty good car loan that I can pay it off with basically within the next five years or so. Granted, I'm not looking forward to that, but now that I'm making a whole lot better money, 
I actually am a bit, I've made peace with it. So, so that's where I was. I got into a major car accident back in August, on August the 5th, and it took me until August the 25th to finally get a new car and get back on the road. So that was basically like the next three weeks or so of me having to commute to and from work, taking Ubers, basically jumping through hoops, trying to basically get with my bank, trying to find a used car that basically was good enough to drive and basically would be having to go all around searching with my brother-in-law to used car lots and whatnot, trying to find anything that we could in order to basically get me back on the road. So, I honestly can't believe it's already been that long. The memories are still fresh in my mind. So, I wanted to do an update on you guys, like, about that, like, months ago. But I decided not to, because I felt like it just wouldn't be the right time for it. Because I basically managed to get a new car and start setting my things, my, 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 my time right, but... You guys gotta keep in mind, like, that summer was probably one of the worst summers that I've had in a while. Nope, more like ever at this point. I gotta admit, guys, with between not being able to find a car for as long as, I, as it took, and basically being stuck working at what I considered a dead-end warehouse job, working with people who were twice my age, who had been there for decades, thinking that I was going to be stuck there just the same as all of them, and basically, well, not being able to actually make any progress with my life, I actually considered going through with it. Effectively speaking, I have wanted to do it for a long time. I've actually been depressed enough to where I think that I do think about it a whole lot, and I actually thought that this time it was it was finally time. I was going to go through with it. So, well, the thing that literally stopped me from doing it was the fact that I knew my roommates wanted to sell the house that they were living in, and so... so I basically decided that the house was already a bit of a fixer-upper in and of itself, so they weren't going to get the best price, even on the best of days. If basically the word had gotten out that someone had died in that house, I realized that they'd never be able to sell the house. Because So I realized that I couldn't screw them over like that. I figured that maybe I had to either do it somewhere else, or at least get an apartment of my own and then do it so that basically I wouldn't be hurting people that I was living with and people that I had that I cared about. I gotta admit, those were pretty dark days. So, but fortunately, with driving my new car, it actually managed to turn a whole lot of things around because I gotta admit, guys, like when I was in college when I didn't have a car, I didn't think that I needed one because, like, I was able to easily walk to and from everywhere that I got, everywhere that I went. But once I finally got my car, I realized how much freedom that I had. It opened me up to basically travel further and explore more areas I had never been to before, and basically just do what I wanted when I wanted. And that was so liberating. So, in the end, um, so, not having a car, even for as short a time as I did, it felt so constraining because I felt literally so helpless. I couldn't even go and buy food on my, on my own time. I had to basically either hitch a ride with a friend or a family member whenever they were going shopping, or I had to basically call an Uber for it. And, well, let's face it, basically calling for an Uber to take you to and from the grocery store, that's that's money. Money is, like, not something that you need to spend lightly. Anyways, so where's the sil here's the silver lining. Here's where it all started to get turned around for me. I managed to basically go through all my emails to look at all the places that I had applied to, 
and I was surprised to find that one of the places I applied to about maybe around the time that the car accident happened, they start sending me an email basically replying, hey, we haven't received your reply in regards to uh, our position, so um, we're... If uh, you don't reply to this in a certain amount of time, we will consider we will um, no longer consider your application. And I'm like thinking, you guys never sent me anything saying if you wanted me or not. If you guys are interested in me, I'd be more than glad to interview with you. And so they decided that like, yeah, we are interested. We like what your resume has to show us. Can you come in on this day and basically give us a, a and uh, speak with us? So I did. I basically. Uh, Waited until the end of work hours that day. I got in my nice clothes. I drove out to Marietta. And basically, what's so ironic is that that's where one of my sisters actually used to live. And that's actually where one of my my other sister actually works. So, it's I knew the area pretty well. I went to the job interview. And uh, I gotta admit, these people were pretty paranoid about the whole virus situation. But... I got interviewed by a very nice girl named Taylor. I explained to her my work experience, and she deemed that I was basically a perfect fit. So, I basically didn't want to get my hopes up because I had been told that before. So, this was in the first week of September, and I go back to work, working at the warehouse and the chemical plant. So, I'm not really expecting to hear anything when I get a phone call basically saying that they want me for the job. And I can't believe it. I think I am stunned. I am so excited to hear that they want me for the job. And the best part about it is it's a work from home job. They tell me that they want me to start on the 14th. So I basically like uh, tell the job that working at the warehouse that this will be my final week because I got to start working immediately the next week. So I go in there for a week of training. They set me up with um, the department and everything. They basically, like, need to do a trial by fire. So the first week or so, they basically say, if you could basically make this quota, we will let you take your equipment home and we'll let you work from home. So I basically did that. I managed to make the quota. and They let me work from home. And, well, that's what I've been doing ever since. So this job so far has been one of the best jobs that I've had, if not the best job that I've had, because... It comes with full medical and dental benefits and all that stuff, so that's the first time I've ever really had a job that was like that. But also the fact that, well, let me just basically put it this way. And in that one year alone, I went to this new job where I'm essentially making nearly double that. Yeah, I doubled my income in just one year. This is literally a godsend, because I noticed that with how big my paychecks have become... I now have disposable income, which has basically given me freedom for the first time in a very long time. So, especially with the way gas prices are nowadays, I don't want to have to commute all the way down there in order to go to work, because, like, friggin', like, having to use the express lanes and basically having to fill up with gas, literally speaking, one week of work, five days of working there, I go through, like, basically my entire tank's work of worth of gas so it's basically like i can usually make a tank of gas last one to two, last two weeks instead of one so but anyways the point is is that this job is work from home but it can also be very frustrating and it does it does soak up a lot of my time effectively speaking like i got to basically be on the job from 8.30 in the morning all the way to 5.30 p.m. at night. And that's basically like during the time where I usually would like to do most of my recording because I like to basically just take the evenings off to just relax and whatnot. And the fact that uh, basically I don't really have all that much in terms of days off for this job. The point is is that I'm in a much better position. I'm in a much better situation than where I was about a year ago. And, well... I basically want to take stock of everything that I've accomplished. I have, I've left my old job, I've graduated college, I have succeeded in getting a new and better job, I had a car accident, but that turned out to be a blessing because it 
actually managed to put me in a position where I could get a new car. It's surprisingly affordable. It's much better than my old car, and I love it. I love having a new and comfortable and clean car that basically that I don't have to worry about it breaking down on me once a year, so that and then basically having to get it repaired. So <coughs> So how do I how do I basically quantify this? But that's basically everything that I've been through for the last year or so, and that's why I haven't done anything with the channel. And I just wanted to give you guys an update as to what it as to why I had to be away for so long. Now, effectively speaking, like what does this mean for the future? Well, Here's uh, one thing, one last bit of the story that you guys need to know. Now, basically, taking a year off of YouTube, especially when you're not the only one who's responsible for your YouTube channel, yeah, that uh, causes a bit of a problem, because you guys know why this channel is called Ganon Ghidorah, right? When I'm supposed to be the Linkzilla? The thing about it is, is that this channel is actually owned and hosted by my friend, who goes by the Ganon Ghidorah handle. Now, the thing about it is, is that we both basically kind of co-own and co-manage the channel, but he sort of acts as a producer for all my content and basically is the one responsible for uploading it and some and does some of the editing for it. Now, the thing about it is, is that he is the one who's really gung-ho about basically getting projects done and getting them on YouTube. The problem is, is that despite... All the stuff that I basically went through the past year, I basically told him that I just don't have the time or the energy to do stuff for YouTube in the same capacity that I used to, and it's going to be a while before I feel comfortable getting back into the swing of things. And Ganon more or less didn't like that, and so we kind of had a bit of a falling out. Ganon... We, he and I basically haven't talked for like the last few months. We both have access to the channel, so we can basically do whatever we want with it. So so I'm basically uploading this video all entirely on my own. But So the thing about it is, is that I am in a much better position than I used to be. So I would really like to reach out to Ganon in order to tell him that I'm ready to basically come back and start doing stuff with the channel again, if you're willing to do it. So, But for, for right now, I just don't know what he's got going on. I don't know what he's up to. I don't know if he's moved on or is still bitter about it. So, effectively speaking, like it's going to be a while before I can ultimately say if we're going to be back at capacity. So... But what I can say is that I'm going to try to go at it on my own. I'm going to try to basically do some easy, simple, and clean videos that don't require all that much in terms of editing. So, uh... But, I guess that's uh, pretty much it. That's pretty much all I have to say. I basically had a lot of experiences this past summer. A lot of ups and downs. And, well... I'm, I may have basically lost a car, lost a whole lot of jobs, lost a friend, but at least now I'm in a much better position, and I'm here to basically, like, start getting back into the swing of things and start doing YouTube again. So, all, I don't really know what I have planned in the future, because I do know that there are a whole lot of games that I want to get to. I know that there's a certain 20th anniversary that's going on this year that I want to get it on, but... I need to basically, like, talk it out with some friends, because I want them to be a part of that. So, anyways, all I can basically say for now is that I really am looking forward to getting back into YouTube. I hope that you guys can accept my, um, my explanation as to where I've been. I apologize for not updating the channel and not really saying or doing anything and i just thank you guys so much for sticking with me for so long you guys i can't tell you what it means to me to know that i have 100 subscribers on this channel knowing that you guys are actually tuning in for my content so i really I, i'm still in the process of figuring out what i'm going to do to help you guys to celebrate that because now 
that I've basically got this new job, I've managed to move into my own new apartment. It's a studio, so it's small, but it fits my needs. So right now, I'm in the process of unpacking all of my gaming equipment, getting set up again, and I'm basically ready to just get back to work. So, hope that you guys are looking forward to seeing what I have to do in the future. And I'm going to basically do something special for you guys to celebrate getting 100 subscribers. And I really hope that you guys continue to stick around and watch my content. In the meantime, I don't really know what else to say except, well, let's play some Doom.